Right, welcome to this Tactics to Showcase video. It's for uh, Orc Mech Guns, one of the new units that I've added to my Orc Army. Uh, I'd chosen to take those back at the index stage, so a good while ago. I uh, proposed a list featuring them in on the Plus channel. Then we sort of retired the Orcs for a while uh, whilst they're waiting for their codex. One of the last to finally get their codex. I, I'd, I'd stop using them with the index because uh, this wasn't fair because <laughs> other, other armies of their new codexes were doing really well. So gave the Orcs a break, focused on other, unit, uh, on other armies and then now the codex has arrived and then uh, I painted through my mech guns, got them finished. They'll feature here in this video. I've completed the Orc uh, list, the final list tip for the Orcs. And it's sort of a shadow of the old style uh, with those my favourite units and then some new additions. One of those new additions is uh, these mech guns and they're here in force as well so uh, in this video I'll we'll zoom in take a close look at the models they're a brilliant kit I, they're a fantastic kit really really nice uh, when, when you see the kit and the different loadouts and options you can go for uh, then you see they, they really are nice but um, I've gone for the custom mega cannon on these but we'll cover all of the options and see which are the most viable and points values and so on uh, in this video but I've got six of these this is my grand battery here for the orcs this is a, be a source of some nice supporting firepower for them but there they are painted up like so and then grots loads and loads and loads of grots just 30 of these little blighters taking me ages to, <laughs> to paint them up but uh, oh so many of them <laughs> but they're a great a different type of unit to, ha to have in your orc army great feature it's nice to have grots you know they are part of the orc culture <laughs> not, not that important but they are an aspect for sure and it's been a shame I've never really incorporated them into an orc army uh, but now these mech guns I've got a bit of an infestation of them <laughs> going on there's loads of them so there's loads of character to them as well and uh, they're better at shooting than their orc counterparts here so I'll just spread these all around it's quite a sight to see this grand battery here once it's fully assembled with all of the little guys around them like so. So you get one gun and you get six crew. One of the crew goes on top of the vehicle, just here on the foot plate here at the side, and then the other five are dotted around. The rules have changed for these. They've changed from the index. There's been some points adjustments and the structure of the rules, uh, the ability of the weapons, it's all changed. So this is a, a fresh approach of these. They have got more expensive, I, I think, but they have got better though. So even I'm glad they've got better. Uh, and it's still quite affordable in points because my original list for the index I've been able to, to bring it over into the new codex list and still keep all six of these in my orc army so just zooming in here to let you see the gun isn't it it's an incredible kit it's such a good kit I really like it so just the same process as I paint the orc boys on the channel here so just on a, a vehicle level uh, and then uh, if you want to see sort of this kind of scale being painted on the plus channel is the in-depth paint tutorial for the orcs and uh, the results that you see in that video exactly the same process applied to these mech guns but uh, i try and change the configuration around with the painting just because it's the same kit same gun so you see i just mix and match with the colors and it helps to break them up don't want them looking too uniform just there i've attached some more glyphs I'll put some on the transfer so you can see them transferred on, like so. Done the little screen. See that with the viewfinder, you know, like a uh, range screen here with the layout there. And you can see the little grot just with his binoculars peeking out from behind the protective plate. And so on. So, not too bad to paint actually. Not too bad at all. So, quite a quick and effective way of painting these up. See a bit of weathering done around the wheels here, a bit of dust and grime added on and so on. But all of that's covered in the painting tutorials. Then uh, these little gits here, painted up, all different poses available, different heads, and you can swap the arms around and so on. A lot of these in the kit, so you can get some nice variety. I really didn't want them all looking the same, so thankfully you're able to do a lot of 
different head combinations and so on uh, to get all different combos for those. <laughs> that one. There's that one. It's one of them. Let's see if I can. Yeah, he's here. Look, it just looks like he's running away, screaming. <laughs> that one there. So some really good ones. Another one shouting. So you can imagine them arguing and bicking with each other and just the comedy of it all taking place. This one's pointing up for some reason. This one, don't know what he's doing. Who knows what they're up to here. This one, very professional looking with his <laughs> binoculars. So some shouting. You can adjust the arms up and down so you can get poses like this with them. But uh, pretty quick to paint these ones as well. Again, I've done the flesh exactly the same as I paint my regular orcs as well. So that's all covered in the painting tutorial. Uh, on the channel here, we'll show you how to paint flesh for orcs. So loads and loads of these little gits here. Just shift those out of the way. So there they are. Yeah, so some some uh, some tactics for these. A big use for them. Uh, my previous list was putting a lot of emphasis on my tank busters for anti-tank ability. And yes, they were good at good at doing that job. But the opponent targets them. And then once they're removed, I lose a lot of my ranged ability of the orcs. Now with the orc codex, orcs are, are good at range now. Uh, they're not to be ignored now for shooting. They are deadly enough, thanks to like the, the Deca 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 special rule. And so uh, I had my eye on the mech guns. I thought they are a cheap option uh, to take to get some decent firepower. Uh, and it's, it's trying to take out enemy vehicles, super heavies and monsters is what I wanted to go for. So not so much heavy infantry, I can deal with those in close combat, but it's the, the nasty firepower coming in at my army that I'm going to try and stop, and usually that comes from vehicles and super heavies. So I wanted a bit of punch to try and neutralise and deal with those. Met guns is the option I've gone for. So I've still got my tank busters, but now I've got a grand battery, of, as I've called it, in support. I love the whole idea of it, like a grand battery of guns, you know, like this on the board. It does look very cool. So, grand battery of guns with all the little grots here, loads of them all gathered round. I just, it's very imposing, it's very imposing, it's a big footprint on the table, just looks very epic. And then to add to them is this guy here, found it on eBay, uh, it's the Games Workshop Big Mech here, I got him in lead, but I think he's still available from Finecast. I had to take him from the index because he's not inside here, and plan for him, he's got a name, Napoleon Git Smasher, Napoleon the reference to the Grand Battery in a sort of Napoleonic style. And he just sits there, bang in the middle, character, nicely hidden, and then within nine inches, which is about that, what you see there, everyone gets, keep them wholly within nine, I pack them like that, everybody gets then a five plus invon save to protect these from the incoming, you know, counter battery, incoming firepower. And then because he's a big mech, you can do repairs, these are counters vehicles. So you can then repair these as they take damage. A couple of casualties here, a couple of wounds here and there. He can move around carefully because you want to try and keep my even on the save. Or maybe position him something like this because then he can reach, you know, everybody, but still keep his nine-inch bubble on all of them uh, is an option. So something like that, I think, is my, my best formation for them. The only danger is one of them might be two of them are at a lesser range. Uh, away from targets and so on, but that might be the safer option. You can move and do repairs uh, there, and then granting the five plus in one save. So big use for him. Uh, so that's the the kind of loadout combination I've gone for. We'll check them in the rules. And just to clarify here, I'll double check the comment section to see if I've got this right. But some have said that you cannot use. Daka 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 for these. They come with Daka Daka Daka. You choose your clan. They do have the Gretchen keyword. So Daka Daka Daka, each time roll modified hit roll, that's, that's the rules for that. Then uh, you then go to Grotz. There's a restriction on them, but I don't think it applies. Yeah, Grotz. 
The unit's comprised entirely of Gretchen, which this unit is. It is, the whole unit is Gretchen keyword. Cannot benefit from a clan culture. In addition, all stratagems can be used in these units if the stratagem explicit, explicitly states the Grot Shield stratagem. So you can't use the stratagems, forget about those. But cultures is nothing to do with Decker, Decker, Decker. That's a separate universal rule for the Orcs. So whatever gun this is that we cover here, it will be subject to Daka Daka Daka, and that's really helpful, especially for the custom Mega Ken option I've gone for. So the power level two, the heavy support, and your starting points cost. You sort of buy the the platform, and it comes with the crew. That's what you're paying for, and then you purchase the weapon type on top of that. Uh, so heavy support, mech gun. Including the crew's 15 points. Very cheap just to buy it initially. So you can go for very cheap batteries of these if you go for the cheaper guns option. Now your stat line, movement three. See, you, they're not static, which is, they're slow, but they're not static, so that's useful enough. There's been times so I need to adjust them. You know, they're out of line of sight, just out of range. Uh, they've got no targets, gonna try and relocate with them. So I move. you can move them three inches. That's not very far. The other thing in those, you can advance with them. So if you are trying to move somewhere quick, you know, it's three inches plus D6. So you, you can move quick enough. But ideally, I try and deploy these where I want them to be for the game, you know. So usually I'll try and sit them on top of an objective, uh, or at least try and get them uh, quite high up the board so that their range, uh, depends what option you go for with the firepower, but I range 36 with these ones. I try and get them at the edge of my deployment zone to then sort of have a field of fire covering the table. Movement 3, weapon skill 5+, plus. don't expect anything from them in close combat. Uh, ballistic skill of 4+, plus. this is the big thing for these, is 4+, plus ballistic skill. There's, you know, orcs 5+, plus, 4+, plus of these guys here. And so, firing at, a, firing at a target, there's no modifiers involved, 4+, plus is decent enough for a cheap option like this. Strength 2, Toughness five though, so a bit of durability with these. And then six wounds, that is an excellent amount of wounds. So a las cannon shot, it's pretty unlikely it's gonna take one of these things out. It's gonna take a fair bit of firepower to bring these down. Remember, for my combination, I've got a five plus invon save here as well, and the ability to repair, so that adds a, a nice bubble of protection for them. Uh, they've got six attacks, but don't expect too much in close combat. Uh, leadership four, I don't think that's ever gonna be needed, unless it's for some kind of psychic power or something, but leadership four, and a five plus save. So five plus save, five plus invon save, uh, is available if you have the custom force field protecting them. Cover the weapons in just a moment. So do get daka daka daka. Mech guns, so this is, the structure of this is all changed now. The first time this unit is set up on the battlefield, all of its mech guns must be placed within six inches of at least one other mech gun. Uh, it's fine for me because I, I want density because of the invon save. Uh, but you can spread out if you need to. At least one mech, one of a mech gun, and with each grot crew within three inches of their mech gun. So there's no string them out, trying anything clever. You've got to keep them tight to the base of the model, which is fair enough. From that point onwards, each mech gun operates independently and is treated as a separate unit for all rules purposes. Now it used to be that you could, the crew could run away and then come back later, all that kind of thing. You could string them out, move them how you want, and so on. But now it's very straightforward. These crew just sit with the gun. Uh, and when casualties are taken, you just put wounds on this. You don't, you don't lose and take away crew. So they have lost out on wounds. You know, you used to be able to spread wounds around or absorb wounds on your crew and so on, but now the wounds are just here. So effectively, there's actually less wounds available. Uh, grot crew, each mech gun and its grot crew are treated as a single model for rules purposes. The crew must remain within an inch of their mech gun and cannot be targeted or attacked separately, so just ignore them for everything. The range and visibility of all attacks made by a mech gun are measured from the mech gun, not the crew. So everything revolves around the actual gun model itself. So that's that. It's all straight, it's very straightforward now. So, I mean, that, that clarification and the way they've organised that is, uh, is, is nice and straightforward. So, no problem at all. So, your options then. So, the first option to take is a bubble chucker. 
Bubble Chucker, 30 points. So it's sort of a medium-ish cost. So you're looking at 45 points per gun. If you're going to go for Bubble Chuckers. I've heard they're a lot of fun. Range 48, so the range on them is superb. Heavy D6, so you get a nice lot of shots. Strength is D6, so... Yeah, that could be anything. It could be strength 1, it could be strength 6. The AP is D6, so it could be... It's guaranteed minus 1 at least. Average of minus 3. And damage of... Uh, on an AP of... Or a potential AP of minus 6. And then damage, D6. So you guarantee 1 damage at least. It could be damage 6. It's a strange weapon. I would say that's probably the best suited for taking on heavy infantry. Would be your best target uh, for that. So battery of 3 of those. About 150 odd points. 3D6 shots into heavy infantry. Terminators, whatever it may be. Uh, Primaris Marines. Going to cause trouble. And then, remember, it's D6, D6 all the way through here. Uh, you could keep a reroll on standby if you need to. But you're rolling per gun. So it's going to be very random. You have one gun. This gun may be excellent. This one may be dreadful. You know, you can be prepared for some very mixed results. So some pleasant surprises from them. And other times, you know, miserable failures. So not the most reliable. You know, you don't know what you're getting each time. It's randomised, but uh, cheap enough and could cause real trouble. So one that I've gone for is the custom mega cannon. It's 45 points. It's 15 points more uh, here. But you know what you're getting with this. This is tank busting ability. Range 36, not as far. Uh, heavy D6. So it is very mixed results. You can get a shot. Or six shots. So if you're relying on one of these, I need to take out tank. I'm going to fire this gun. I hope it works. You know, that's not a good idea. You're, you're more looking for a load of them. So they start to average each other out. So yeah, you may get a one, then a three, then a five, then a two, and it it averages itself out. But if you say, right, this this one uh, mech gun here needs to take out this tank, then there's trouble because it's they're not that reliable that way. That's why I've gone for a bigger battery of them. You know, there's a bane blade. I'll fire all six of them at the main blade. They'll average themselves out that way. Uh, strength, eight. Brilliant. AP minus three. Excellent. And the damage is D6. I'm sure it used to be D3 in the index, so they've improved. D6 damage uh, is terrific. You know, I, I, I do you know what I'm going to do. We're going to roll up and pretend we're firing a main blade. Yes, that will happen in this video, just to <laughs> just to see, because this is, this is what they're meant to do. Uh, so if you're on one or more unmodified hit rolls of one, the bearer suffers a mortal wound after all the weapons attacks have been resolved. So any hit rolls of one, you've got so many wounds that it shouldn't be a problem. And then in my situation I have him, he can start doing repairs. So then you've got a smasher gun. Uh, 16 points, this is your budget option here, very cheap, so 31 points per gun. You know, so for less than 100 points you can get a battery of three of them. Really good. Uh, by the way, you can take up to six guns in one battery, by the way. I, I've split mine into two batteries of three, just to help me fulfill a spearhead detachment. But by all means, you can take a full deployment of three of, of six of them. It means it's one less deployment to make, you know, try and increase the chances of going first if you're trying to play it that way. Uh, so this one, smash your gun. Range 48, heavy D3, so nowhere near as many shots. Strength. Instead of making us a wound roll for this weapon, roll 2d6. If the result is equal to or greater than the target's toughness, uh, the attack successfully wounds. You're trying to roll over the toughness. Uh, it's AP minus 4 and d6 damage. And it's okay. It's alright. If you really stretch on a budget, the smasher gun is fine. I can't see it being that bad. You, you Say a vehicle, for example. Toughness 7. You're trying to roll 2d6 and beat that. That's doable. For sure. Or you're going to fire heavy infantry. Uh, toughest 5, toughest 4. Should easily be able to do that. So, yeah, it's alright. Smash your guns, okay. Next one's a tractor can. This is one everyone's saying is the best. 30 points. So it's, yeah, it's cheaper compared uh, to the custom mega can, for sure. The range is superb, range 48. You only get one shot, but it's, it's a good shot. For sure, uh, it's strength 8, minus 2, and d6 damage, so it's comparable to the custom Mega Cannon. This weapon also hits its target. That is the massive 
bonus uh, with this, no matter what uh, modifier shenanigans are going on, you just get your hit. It is really good. If the target is an enemy vehicle that can fly, roll two dice when inflicting damage with this weapon, discard the lowest. If a vehicle that can fly is destroyed by this weapon, the model automatically crashes and burns, or its equivalent. Do not roll a dice. So that's really good. Now, here's a question. Check the comment section for this. Auto crash and burn, or its equivalent. Does that mean if you fire a Tau Hammerhead, for example, it's auto explode? Is the question that I have. Yeah, you can imagine the tractor cannon, it's, it's grabbing it, swinging it around the battlefield and smashing it into other stuff and detonating it. You can imagine it happening, but is that the rules? Uh, is destroyed by this weapon, the model automatically crashes and burns, or its equivalent, do not roll a dice. I'd imagine, yeah, it's auto explode for vehicles that can fly. It is a scary weapon. It's definitely a scary weapon for sure. The tractor cannon is nasty enough. I still rate the custom mega cannon. But definitely the tractor cannon, it's a cheaper option, powerful, reliable, decent weapon for sure. Yeah. No, okay. Interesting. So that's the choices that are available. So other than that, I think that's it. There's not really any stratagems to cover because you, you can't. Uh, so that's your grand battery. I usually deploy them near each other. Sometimes I might try and screen them with all boys to protect them. Uh, I usually try and deploy them with this combination here, the... Uh, custom mega cannon deploy them quite high up because I want to try and make sure that I can position them to cover most of the battlefield so you usually see them positioned quite centrally cover most of the battlefield and then uh, be in range without having to move so there's that uh, and then this guy here to do repairs and the 5 plus inbound save to protect so what we'll do is fire into this rhino just to see how many guns it takes to bring it down. So it's quite random here. So custom mega can is the option. So D6 shots, four. A force to hit. Got myself two shots, uh, two hits. Threes to wound. Uh, it's AP minus three, six to save. No, and D6 damage. Four wounds caused. So that's okay. The next gun gets three shots. Gets a hit. Gets a wound. 6 to save, another d6 damage, another 2, so that goes to 6. Next gun, 4 shots this time, uh, 2 hits, got myself an extra shot with Daka Daka Daka, which hits. This is pretty good, 3's to wound, not so good there, might come on, re-rolled that. Uh, no save, and uh, 5 damage, Rhino destroyed, so 3 guns have brought down the Rhino. That's, that's the plan, is just to fire one gun after the next and try and cause wounds that way. So that's the Rhino. We'll pretend that we have a Bane Blade here. So we'll see if these guns can do it. We'll roll up everything together. So I know there's potential mortal wounds that could be caused and so on, but uh, it's not gonna be significant here with what we're trying to do. So we're trying to bring down a 24 wound Bane Blade here, that's the plan. Or at least cause trouble big trouble hopefully so this is the number of shots this will give you an idea of the average I'm looking at here so 21 shots yeah that sounds healthy enough so I'm looking for fours in normal circumstances. God. Now, in the index, that's what you got, but now with the codex, I've got these extra shots coming in. Ha, <laughs> that's helped. Really good. Fours for wounds, though, toughness eight. Yeah, this isn't so good. Save one. Just 2d6 damage. Nine wounds. All right, so that super heavy is in pretty good shape still. We'll then go for, uh, we'll do another round. So this is the number of shots. That's 12, 15, 22. See the dice start to average themselves out here. Yep, 
Yeah, then that kind of thing can happen where you get a good roll. That is a good roll. Wow. Yeah, this is this is the, the roll you'd hope for in a game. Got another six shots here. Ah, shame. Just another hit. Uh, Force to wound. This is an important roll here. Yeah, so poor, poor ro uh, roll that one. Six is to try and save these. Save one. But 4d6 damage, and that is a, that is good. 4d6 should cause trouble. Yeah, 15 wounds. That bone blades, that's nasty damage. That is nasty damage. That's good. 15 wounds. That's more than half killed. We'll have another go. Uh, 25 shots. That sounds healthy enough. So you're starting to get an idea of your average for your firepower for six of those. It all starts to average itself out. So one thing I'm worried about here, as soon as you start to take the minuses with these, yeah, for example, let's say it's a minus one has been put on the target then you're dropping down to that kind of effectiveness. And then you, s <laughs> you get another minus one, and all of a sudden you're down to that kind of effectiveness. Mm. Target selection is important. You know, maybe avoid shooting at something that does have minus one, go for the easier targets as often as you can. Uh, but three more shots, three more hits. This is looking good. Just need a good dice roll here. Need fours for wounds. Yeah, now we've got a result with the Bane Blades. Big trouble. Big, big trouble. This could be a kill here. Sixes. It's a good recovery. God. Send the result here. Shoo. Ten. Ten. Twenty-eight. Yeah, got the kill. So it's three rounds there. Uh, so some damage, decent damage, and then a kill. So that's the kind of results you're looking to get there and I'm hoping that, you know the durability of these means they'll stick around for a while and they'll be able to keep that kind of firepower up. Uh, if I electrify them a vehicle, a standard tank, that tank should be destroyed and then some shots to spare. Do you know I'm just I'm sure a number of you are thinking I hope he rolls up to see what tractor cannons can do. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. Just here, it's a cheaper option, you know, if, if you find a weapon that's just as effective or more effective for less points, then maybe you can spend points on other stuff, is the big point here. So, same target, let's say we're going for the Bane Blade here, we've just seen what the custom Mega Cannons can do. Uh, the only thing with those is more shots, better advantage. But here you got bigger range, so you can deploy a bit safer. That's an advantage. Uh, we'll get six shots, which uh, turn into six hits automatic. We'll then try and wound on four pluses. Yeah, we've wounded with one. Hmm, okay, so. Minus two, five up save, almost saved, and d6 damage. Okay. Okay, uh, we'll try and wound again. This is, say, the second round of shooting. That's really good. Five pluses to save. Save one. Uh, four d6 damage. Okay, so uh, seven, nine damage. And then we'll say we get eight hits again, or six hits again. Uh, we'll then try and wound again. Two wounds come through this time, because so a four's to win, because a toughness eight here for the Bane Blade. And the damage, or trying to save, no, and the damage, no, all right. I don't think that's as good. The massive draw card for that is your ability to uh, get auto hits. That is very useful. But in most games, you should be finding a target that you can hit without modifiers, usually is gonna be the case. Uh, and even minus one's okay-ish. Five pluses to hit is okay, with a help from Daka Daka Daka. You know, 66 shots, so you should still be causing trouble. I still think I'm gonna stick with these, but it's a discussion, check the comment section, see what people are saying. But I still rate the custom Mega Can. 
So, yeah, it's interesting. I, I find the whole thing fascinating. Right, okay, I'm sure people are now saying, you've got to try the others. So, we'll see. Bubble chucker then. We'll give it a go. I mean, this is Ben Our target's the Bane Blade. I, this is, I'm enjoying this, actually. <laughs> doing this just to see. Uh, so, bubble chucker, you get, you get D6 shots. Again, we just find the grand battery here just to see how effective it can be. Uh, so, 24 uh, shots here. Yeah see how effective this can be. Nice lot of shots, I do like the idea of that. 24. Yep. It's looking for fours. So you should start to hit some averages. Yeah. So that's your that's your hits, hold it there. We've got another two shots, which gets an extra. So, uh, we're going for strength. Two, <laughs> come on reroll. And I'll leave it as it stands. Strength for twos, we'll be on sixes for wounds. <laughs> Two, absolutely dreadful. Yeah, bubble chucker. <laughs> the best you're gonna get is fives, isn't it, Against in this kind of situation? It's maybe not fair a target, but it's, it, it's the heavy armor I'm trying to deal with. Maybe just do one example of these. That's your wounds. Uh, it's minus D6, so minus 5 to go straight through. And the damage is D6. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've rolled this up wrong because you're meant to be rolling each gun individually, but I'm just going for, say, an average here. So the average damage would have been a 1. I know it's going to be, you roll separately for each gun. It's basically for each gun, because they're independent once they're set up. Each gun, you're rolling up for a different number of shots, which we've done correctly. Uh, then the strength is, it varies. So you're either going to be on sixes to wound or fives to wound against that Bane Blade target. Uh, your AP is going to vary between AP minus one to AP minus six, and then damage of D6 each time uh, as well. So you know you could effectively you could roll up three D6 damage, which is seven. Hmm. So bubble chuckles, they're okay. But I said earlier on, inf heavy infantry would be more uh, their kind of target. The other one's the Smasher gun. Yeah, we'll give this maybe just one try. We'll see what happens to this one. So looking for heavy D3 shots here. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 shots of this. Which is an encouraging enough start. Terrible roll. Yeah, it's not really fair. Um, I've got to try and roll over the toughness each time. So try to be 8. Yes, trying to be eight. No, trying to be eight. No, and trying to be eight. No. So one gets through. Uh, it goes straight through the armor. And it's D6 damage. One. <laughs> so shocker. We'll have another go. Still right in the custom mega cannon here in this little competition that we're having. So this is uh, D3 shots here. So three, uh, six, nine, eleven, twelve. You just sort of know more what you're getting with a custom mega cannon. You know the strength, you know the AP minus, you know the damage every time. And it's just the only randomization really is the damage result and the actual number of shots. Uh, extra shot here, which does hit. Uh, so we've got a lot of these trying to get through, trying to beat the armor. The first one, trying to beat eight, so failed. Trying to beat eight. Failed again. Oh. Failed again. Trying to beat eight. Oh, can't do it. One gets through. No. No. No, can't do it. Eight's quite tough. No. Ha! <laughs> damage of D6. Five wounds cause. I... So there you go. I just. See, I have other units in my army that are designed for taking on uh, light infantry, infantry, and all of that, those kind of targets. I'd, it depends what your need is. Whatever your need may be, whatever you're lacking, you can get these support batteries to help out. Mine is anti-armor, you know, tank busting ability from range. I do have the tank busters, it's not enough. And so these are here to step in to neutralize targets. And even if this, this whole lot here are managing just to destroy one Lehman Russ a turn, that is useful enough. 
It really is. Another thing to help keep these alive is the fact that the rest of my Wakami is bombing straight towards <laughs> the opponent, and so they'll often be busy trying to deal with with the crazy orc horde that's heading towards them instead of these. And if these just sit there, one turn after the next, d6 shots per gun, uh, coming in at that kind of rate there, uh, st strength 8 minus 3, d6 damage, uh, they should cause trouble. We saw that. One round of shooting, they can take out a Bane Blade. It is doable. So that definitely is an option. And I think I will stick with the custom Mega Cannons, uh, despite the appeal of some of the others. I think the custom Mega Cannon is uh, the scariest of all of those weapons, for sure. So, uh, we've rolled up a lot of dice in this episode, but it's just to uh, try and illustrate uh, the situation and the different weapons that are available, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of discussion. Check out the comment section below, see what people are saying. If you have experience of using these in games, how many do you take, what combination, what's the best tactics, and so on. See what other experienced orc players are saying. But there it is, that's the tactics, and uh, showcase video here for the mech guns. Uh, my new models are painted up here for the Orcs. Uh, check out the other uh, videos here for the Orcs, the tactical videos, uh, and then keep a lookout for battle reports here and on the Plus channel as well uh, for the Orcs in the near future. But there it is, that's Mech Guns for the Orcs. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.